Hello everyone, I'm David Kools and this is Anthony Hughes. Hi. Voila. We're both uh, pianists and uh, students of Peter Feuchtwanger and we'd like to share with you uh, our, our knowledge and experience that with, uh, we have acquired uh, throughout the years uh, studying with Peter and uh, specifically the Chopin method which we've discovered in a book, this book by Daniel de Klerk. Mm -hmm. I'll just show it to the camera a bit closer. Okay. It exists in English and uh, Dutch. And this is a Belgian pianist who played in Warsaw for Chopin in the institution. And he actually mentions the way Chopin thought uh, taught, I mean, to his pupils. Mm -hmm. So it's a method of practicing, isn't it? Uh, yes, it says yes. But first, maybe we'd like to share with you uh, how we warm up uh, before starting a practice uh, session. When you get up in the morning, what uh, what do you do, for example, Anthony, to warm up before you start your practice? Mm -hmm. Yes, but before I start my practice, I will play through these four exercises which I'm now going to demonstrate to you and share with you guys and explain exactly what they are. That's what I do, David, and that's, is it not that? That's what you, you do yourself, isn't it? Yes, that's yeah. the essence of uh, the, the Chopin method. What I do also is like uh, stretching right. uh, the body when I get up, you know, I, I, I stand up and uh, I, I feel myself in a, like in a bubble and I start stretching the arms in all kinds of directions. So you stretch all the muscles from the upper body, basically, uh, in all directions. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. you can do yoga, you can... Mm -hmm. I do a lot of yoga myself, personally. So mm -hmm. I just jump on the piano. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> And secondly, maybe we should explain how to sit properly on the stool. Yes, indeed, of course. That's, that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one of the most important aspects of playing the piano, is it not, David? Absolutely. Sitting correctly. Yes, yeah. in order to avoid any tension, strain, yeah. and um, if your body is not working for you while you're playing the piano, it's working against you. And that can have chronic fatal consequences if you have the wrong... You can. position, right? Yes, that's right. So how yeah. would you suggest to sit correctly on, on a piano stool, Anthony? I would sit pretty much like, like I am right now. Mm -hmm. I would sit not too close, not too far, and so that my hand is in line more or less with the arm, with the forearm there, yeah. and so as that my back and my torso is straight. Yes. You're not bending over not like some pianists. Not slumping like this. Yeah, no? exactly. And I'm not leaning backwards too much like that. I'm exaggerating, obviously. Yeah. I'm not leaning back no. like that. But just yes. natural like that. Yes, your neck looks really relaxed. Mm -hmm. you, you, we, I know many pianists on videos that are always They've watching the at their down. hands. And that, that's really not good. Put the neck down, don't they, like that yes. too much. Yes. Again, I exaggerate. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Well, how I learned it is from an osteopath uh, in uh, Spain. And I learned it the way to do like this with your fingers. Open your, between your third and fourth finger. And uh, if I may illustrate yes. uh, just a second, Anthony. Go ahead. I wish it the same as you. Put these, uh, your fingers on the stool and then look for your sitting bone. So you feel you're sitting with your weight on your sitting bone and then lean slightly forward so you feel also some weight on your heels. And then of course the arms like you perfectly demonstrated to hang them over your shoulders, completely loose, relaxed. And then the way Peter uh, taught us, isn't it, to have a little, like a, a little rope around the wrist and That's right. and put it on uh, on the keyboard. Yes. So with me, it looks a bit like this. This is how I feel. Perfect. To to play. But that that 
it is very similar, is it not, David? It's excellent. To what I'm, to, to the way I'm sitting myself, we're both Correctly. sitting very, very similarly. And just one little remark. Uh, we discovered in uh, Alfred Cortot's Principe mm -hmm. Rationnel uh, du Piano uh, that he mentions the height of the piano stool between 40 and 45 centimeters. Mm -hmm. And we both feel comfortable. We're both the same height, Anthony and I. Yes. So we're sitting, how much was it, Anthony? Was it? Um, 44 centimeters, I remember. Yes, I think so. Between, yes. It was either 44 or 45, but it was within Corto's measurements. <laughs> exactly. Perfectly between. So uh, we're happy about that. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> voilà. So um, maybe um, you would like to demonstrate the four phases of the Chopin method um, now? Yes, certainly, yes. And I uh, will just point out a few things uh, just before you do that. Okay. So for all exercises, make sure you keep breathing normally. This may sound very evident, but obviously when you're practicing, lots of tensions can arise and then people forget to breathe. They block their breathing, they're focusing on whatever and some strain comes up, right? Yes. Uh, as in yoga, be watchful for any strain inside the body. Mm -hmm. That's a bit the same. Maintain a correct body position, which we just explained. Mm -hmm seat height and distance from the keyboard, relaxed body and mentally focused. Yes. And I would just like to add that uh, from doing Peter's exercises, he has specific exercises on all kinds of technical problems, every technical problem virtually, uh, like Chopin also did. Yes. Uh, yes. From doing these exercises, you get into this natural state of physically relaxed, mentally sharp as what? Well. Yes. Would you agree with that? Entirely, yes. And you can understand everything about Peter's exercises all the more when you in using these methods of Chopin's as well. Mm -hmm. Everything makes sense and ties together. Mm -hmm. I have discovered myself. Yes. From years of practicing Peter's exercises. You mentioned something very specific which I found very interesting. Yes. Uh, that when you practice these four phases of the Chopin method, what uh, what comes up? You, you told me before about the fingering. Very natural fingering. When you apply them to the repertoire, you mean, mm -hmm. David? Yes, exactly. Subsequently. Excuse me, exactly. I mean that to the yes. repertoire. That's for later. That's for later. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we have uh, four phases. And uh, maybe you'd like to show us the, the first phase. Okay. And go through them slowly. Well, the first phase, the first exercise is called is called the staccato exactly. exercise. Maybe I can just show it to the camera briefly. It's this staccato. Do you have the hand position there and the, uh, sorry, the scale position? Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, what we do is we take the hand naturally falls for the right hand uh, on the B major scale, starting on E. That's correct, isn't it, correct. David? Yes. And that is precisely where Chopin starts this exercise for each of the four. Correct. The first exercise, the reason, I'll go back, the reason Chopin does this is because that's the most natural way the hand falls at the keyboard with the three middle fingers over the black keys and the thumb and the little finger on the white keys either side, like that, on those keys. Exactly. It's actually much more natural than the C major scale, right? Which By is far, yeah. usually uh, taught in conservatories, music academies, yes, etc. We, we have black keys in the way, you know. <laughs> so mm -hmm. It's sort of awkward and you have to curl the fingers and tension mm -hmm. arises, does it not? Yeah, like grabbing an apple or That's a tennis right. ball, all these uh, <laughs> old-fashioned uh, yes, right. ideas. So, when we do the first one, one hand at a time, you can start with the right or you can start with the left. Ah, what I didn't say, so the right starts on E and it goes up and down 
the left shop on would start on the B, immediately below middle C. Correct. So you've got the three middle fingers again on the black keys there. Mm -hmm. And they would go down. Correct. And the first exercise, I'll start with, I'll take the right hand, because it's closer to you guys. Yes. And um, we play pianissimo staccato. And keep the whole body relaxed, the arm relaxed, and the fingers relaxed, and the hand relaxed, and the wrist relaxed. And this is it. No effort. Effortless. Yes. And as short and as light as possible. No effort whatsoever from the finger, arm key. Yes. Just let it drop. And that's Chopin's method. Great. The I think it's very quite straightforward. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Yes. Of course, when you when you do it just for yourself, when you practice it yourself, I personally I mm -hmm. extend it. I might start with the five exercises there, and then just continue and do a complete scale. Like exactly. Tally up to the you can fool around and do yes, a few right. yeah. up and rights up and down as you wish. Yeah, yeah, do what you like, yes. But this is the basic position the basic. for the five fingers. That's the basic, yes. Okay. Very good. Would you like me to show the second exercise? Yes, please. Yeah, that, that would be... Is that clear enough, is the, the first exercise, do you think? I think so, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the second exercise, exactly the same keys. Legato it's staccato, it's called. Exactly. And so. it's it's a deeper touch and a slightly longer staccato. So we actually hold the key down for a little bit of time. I'll show you what I mean. It's forty, isn't it, David? Yes. Forty. Exactly. Precisely the same touch. But we go deeper into the key. So we go deeper, deep, much deeper into the key, but it's still totally relaxed. You feel it in my hand? Yes. In my arm? You feel safe. No tension. No tension. Even in the wrist? depending on how I feel. I'll just show quickly to the camera the second phase, how it's notated in uh, Daniel de Klerk's book with a slur and some dots. And these are the exact notes that uh, Anthony is playing. So it's a heavier staccato, legato, staccato, which comes from portamento, uh, which indicates the singing technique uh, of the portamento di voce to the bel canto style. Okay. Okay. Now the third exercise. Here we get a little bit longer in the key hold. It is called the third exercise, accentuated legato. So again, we're playing forte, and we're going deep into the key, into the bed of the key, like the previous one. And we but, could describe it as a legato marcato. Yes. That's a great right. description, David, yes. Mm -hmm. A legato marcato, yes. Because we do good. an explosive, you can show. Yes, uh, I'll show. It's not precisely legato. There's a very slight break, very, very slight break between each note. So like a non-legato, right? Sort of, sort of like a non-legato, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. But it's legato, but non-legato. Yeah, almost, jumping. Like a cross between the two. Exactly. Maybe you can demonstrate it, it will be clearer. Yes, I think so. Phrase yes. it into words. I think so, yes. Very good. 
Yeah. So it's like so the last minute jumping to the next note, but mm -hmm. in the most relaxed way. Sort of like fr from the wrist. Yeah. Just like sort of jump from the wrist. Yeah. And the arm stays completely. Little in. flick from the wrist, isn't it? Yeah. A tiny little flick. Exactly. And everything remains just as calm and relaxed as previously. Exactly. And that is just notated like this in the book with these signs and the slur below it. And now this is the fourth phrase that Anthony will explain, which is called legato, which we all know, of course. Mm -hmm. So now we take the three previous ones and we've warmed up a little bit now. The hand feels a little bit warmer. We feel a little bit more comfortable with the instrument because we've done three already. Yeah, we're warming up. Yeah, the muscles are warmed up a little bit. And now comes the result of our effort, the synthesis. Yeah, this is the result, isn't it, Don? Isn't it, Dave? That's why we do the exercises to yes. achieve a beautiful... A beautiful sound. And a legato. beautiful legato. Yes. Exactly. So we just do a legato. Very, very pianissimo. Pianissimo as possible. Just relax totally and... Mm -hmm. with your attention the sound and copying it, bending it to the next sound, just beautifully flowing. You could do like a little crescendo going up, you mean when they're going down, you can fool around with it, do whatever you want, yes, as still, long as it's legato. There's no strict rules, about, exactly. uh, except for Chopin, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. of course. Yeah. So that's how I do. I would... Do all the way up here. four exercises. True. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe we can mention that it just works for us. We've been, since we've been doing them, we really uh, notice that uh, the benefit in the practice method also. In the next video, we will explain how do we apply these four uh, exercises or phases of the Chopin method into the repertoire. But first I would like to mention that uh, this B major scale, in the beginning, we were also a bit skeptical, like B major scale, the Chopin method, what is this all about? Is he, is he inventing the, the, the warm water or something? <laughs> uh, but no, nothing is uh, less true. I mean, uh, we have... Um, um, yeah, I, I thought the same, David. Uh, I, was, yeah. I used to think like that myself when I, when I first heard about this. I thought, what? <laughs> but I know there is a, a beautiful video on YouTube by John Browning, Pianist, American pianist John yes. Browning, who's a student of uh, Rosine Levine. Mm -hmm. And uh, he explains also that all the Russian school pianists were taught with the B major scale because it's just so much more natural than the C major scale. Yes. And, uh, and they would have uh, yeah, this beautiful relaxed uh, grip on the piano and uh, with a slight arc in the fingers, okay. But uh, mm -hmm. so it's not something new, it's something that's been used and with success, so uh, and he further, furthermore, he mentions, does he not, that uh, he plays the, the note with the fleshy part of correct. the finger. Correct. Yeah, that's Which very important. Creates a very, just, yeah, very yeah. important. That because that produces. Go ahead, David. You will, you will get a hard sound if you use the the top of the fingers only, and you attack vertically the keyboard, and you do, for example, uh, you know, that's hard. But if you start from the key itself and you use more flat fingers using the fleshy part, mm -hmm. you can still do a beautiful forte, but it will never be aggressive. I can hear the difference. As compared, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope yeah, the audience yeah. also appreciates it when you do. Ow. That's ow. Yeah, we don't ouch. want that. I don't like that. <laughs> let's, uh, let's smoothen it up. <laughs> so great. Um, okay. You, so is the, there anything you would like to add to well, the fleshy when you play with it from the fleshy part of the finger? I mean, which you've warmed up now, so no pedal, 
No effort. Etc. It just feels like natural, does it? Exactly. And maybe it's interesting, just the last thing to mention, that the forte phases mm -hmm. uh, are never a hard sound. No, Even no. though we attack them from slightly above the keyboard, they're never harsh, right? They're never harsh. They're never exactly. played like you just showed. Exactly. Like that. Mm. Yeah. With that ugly sound from the exactly. tip of the finger. Always from a natural height. Yeah. Sorry, a natural attack. See, it sounds beautiful. I'm playing it with that there, yeah. this part of the thing. Exactly. Yeah. So, I think uh, that uh, sums it all up, what we've been discussing. Mm -hmm. I think so. The Chopin method. Yes. I hope it's clear for everyone. And Yes, hope it's clear, guys. And we hope you enjoy practicing this and putting it into your practice routine. Tell us your findings. As much as we enjoy talking about it and sharing it with you. Send us an email and tell us your, your findings, sure. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you, the feedback. And we'll make a second video about uh, how to incorporate it into the repertoire practice. How do you use these four phases now in your own uh, repertoire? So have a look at the second video for that. Bye for now. Bye-bye, guys.